So, my week started with uh, my lower extremities, you know, just, just threatening to secede right from my body. So, uh, how'd your start? You know, there's nothing's like trying to get to school, you know, to learn while your body decides it's a great time to completely just fall apart. In my opinion, one of the worst feelings is wanting to do something that you also need to do, but then the universe is like, nah, not today. But not enough to like, when you're feeling like really sick, like that one time I had pneumonia, but, but just enough to make you feel miserable. Then, uh, then it continued for another day, which really pissed me off. But uh, and if you saw the uh, laughable early concept prototype for this show way back uh, earlier in the summer, uh, then you know I kind of do youth ministry combined with an after-school martial arts program. You know, I started uh, taking lessons sometime in 2008, and now I volunteer there. And Tuesday was the start of classes. You know, it's always busy the first day because you've got all these kids coming in, you know, trying to sort everyone and give everyone's name tags, size them for uniforms, you know, try to get everyone to be nice and, you know, hurting six-year-olds in a big gym that they've never been to before. So that's always fun. And this time, like, I really needed to be there because a lot of the other instructors, like, they've moved away to go to college, and only a few have uh, just been able to stay and continue helping. By the way, if you want to know more about that, I've left some links in the description. I did, for some whatever reason, put out uh, this weird video, probably right there on the monitor. Um, I don't know what it is, uh, and there's no real way to describe it. I mean, I like it. It's the most, like, creative thing I've done in a while. And even though I have no idea what I was trying to get across with it, I mean, when I put out stuff like that, it's like mental therapy to, uh, clean out all the mental trash that just accumulates in my head over time. You know, so I can really focus on my work. I try to figure out why, why Citizen Kane is still astonishingly arresting to look at. I really mean that. And uh, I have to clarify myself on that because calling Citizen Kane a good movie has become a meme in film criticism circles. Yes, even art critics have memes, the more you know. Wednesday was fun, since I found out that procrastination doesn't go away once you enter college. In calculus, we're reviewing for the test we had on Friday, and it turns out that only like a few couple people had actually like done the review for the day. Special bonus was that some of them haven't even started, and I mean, the procrastination isn't like IB levels of procrastination, which is on another, it's on a galactic scale of difference. But you know, I'm pretty sure that procrastination happens in IB because of the program uh, destroying people's abilities to uh, reason properly. There's also a history quiz that day. I thought, and I'm thinking at the time, oh, well, this is gonna just do me and I'm only gonna get half of it right. But uh, the funny part is the professor is like talking to another student who's also absent about the proper communication. He's, uh, you know, and he's looking right at me. He's throwing shade at me with his eyes. And I'm like, I'm thinking, I emailed you directly from my essay of email, so, you to, so don't even try throwing shade at me, okay? Joke's on him because I actually got an 80% on the test that I had no idea what it was gonna be on, so uh, I guess his shade was uh, overshadowed. <laughs> and then the math test on Friday, just awful, because the answers were like, man, there's like four A's in a row, and then all the other answers are like in these groups of two. And so when you, someone lets me see these very specific patterns in an answer, like I start freaking out. I'm like, okay, I already took my SATs. I'm done. I don't have to deal with questions that are actively trying to trick me anymore. I at least showed up to the class. I mean, some people didn't even show up to the test. And that's considering we only take four tests the whole semester. And the only other assignments are the four study guides. So you've just, that person just missed 20% of uh, their grade already. So that, uh, that person's just doomed themselves for working twice as hard to escape the hole that they've managed to dig for themselves. There's a joke in there about millennials being lazy, but you know, I'll leave that to people who don't know what they're talking about, like Time Magazine. The main news topic I want to discuss this week is the 15th anniversary of 9-11. In all honesty, I still don't know if we've really come to terms with what happened that day and everything that's come afterwards. I don't know what the world was like beforehand, like, I mean, like, personally anyway, like, I can read about it, but I don't know what it was like to just go get an airline ticket and then get on the plane. The, the personal story is what's been told to me is that on um, that day, I was with my parents when they went to go to this office trailer, and while they're, and they're in there talking to a person, I'm stuffing my face with donut holes. And the reason we were doing that is because we, they were signing the papers to build this house, the very place where uh, I've grown up for the past 15 years that it's coming up on it. And in addition, the immediate effect on me from what I remember is that uh, my dad was a reservist stationed at McDill at the time. You get home, Within 72 hours, he gets a phone call, gone. 
I didn't see him for a year after that, roughly. We went and visit like once because he was at station at MacDill. Like he didn't have to go over to the Middle East or anything like that. So we saw him, I think, maybe once or twice. We were able to go up like on a Saturday or something like that for a few hours. So we were, you know, lucky in that respect. Yeah, but, but I essentially didn't see him for a year. He didn't see us for a year, so. Yeah. It could be, uh, because of terrorism, uh, you know, they, he, he missed my fourth birthday. No. Moving on. Uh, recently, I saw these, I saw these two uh, great videos about 9-11 in the media, and I, of course, put links below. Really shows how much the country is still in a fog about what happened, and considering we really still haven't dealt with the trauma. Like, the videos stick, stay within the realms of media and artistic uh, depictions of the events, so it's not, but uh, I'll go with the real world stuff here and that. Even though we've claimed we've done all the stuff of safety, like the TSA is a joke, we all know that, and the Patriot Act, uh, is pretty much a violation of your constitutional rights. The war on terror in itself is being fought with this Cold War mentality that's just completely ineffective in this day and age. On top of all that, the, what really makes you sick to your stomach is that the politicians are treating like 9-11 like some kind like their other political footballs. Instead of dealing with it through like legislation and talking and trying to figure out what's actually going on, they're just they're just not saying anything and then the media the news, they're not doing anything, and honestly it doesn't surprise me, considering the story just broke with uh, the nation's trust in mass media is lower than the lowest low that ever went to lows. There are solutions to these problems, I mean, there has to be, uh, because, you know, I believe that people can work for a better tomorrow. Even though, you know, I am personally a bit of a pessimist about the future, but that doesn't give me the right to just let it all go. I really don't like people like like claim that they're like a pessimist or a nihilist, and then they just sit there and do nothing. It's like, oh, well, that's what I think, so I'm not going to do anything. No, I use that pessimism to motivate myself, so my so my cynical outlook gets defied. I actively go out and try to find my own opinion on things, because nobody wants to live in a terrible world. Even if you think that's how it's all going to happen, why just let it happen? For example, I also don't stop trusting the 24/7 news cycle, and uh, so I you know try to find these stories directly. Now that eliminates one of those key biases, the gatekeeper effect that traditional media has on people. That stranglehold gets eroded as more and more people can get information directly, but it's a double-edged sword because it requires the masses to be motivated enough to go out and find it, do their own research, and follow up on everything. And however, and people people don't do that, you see uh, fiction spreading faster than the truth. You know, a more a more humorous example was that uh, fake story of a Chinese zoo running the pole that led to their girl being named Harambe McHarambe Face. And even though people just done like two minutes of research they said they would realize it was a joke. It's kind of transition away from the negativity for a more, a more positive story. A, a British medical student has invented a way to safely transport vaccines into uh, remote regions. Now traditionally vaccines have to be stored at a very specific temperature and when you're trying to go out to these remote areas that don't necessarily have the infrastructure to keep them at that specific temperature they might freeze or they might get too hot and then now you don't have a vaccine. But now, this device can actually keep up that ideal temperature without having to rely on that infrastructure being there. So, millions of people now have access to life-saving vaccines. The real beauty of it is that he's decided not to patent it at all, instead letting anyone manufacture it to keep costs down. So, because it doesn't have to be made for a profit, it, it just has to be made, you know, per, uh, per quota. I think that's a really wonderful thing. I have a quick question. Yeah. This doesn't have to be in the video, but... If somebody like comes up with an, another version of his, what he made, can they patent it and be just a dick about it, like like pull a Mark Screlly? Uh, I think since it already exists, you know, he released it into the public domain, so s someone else can't. Um... So he did something to protect it, so that nobody can swoop in and, and like profit from it. Uh, it's the problem is it's British, so their I, their copyright law is different than ours. Their patent yeah. law is different than ours. Because in American patent law, yeah, they could totally do that. I don't think that's how it is that's in British patent I'd, law. That's what I'd be concerned about. Like I don't know. Like I think I would I would patent it just if I was going to give is, it, if I was going to give it away to somebody like that, and I wanted to protect. Or them, I think I would patent it and then just, you know, not charge for it or do find That's some not, way to no, do that. That's not, no, when you do a thing with modern patent laws, can you, do that? you can't do that. You, if you make a pencil, you have to actively protect it and actively, um, use it. Well, well, right, but I'm saying, like, still find a way to... No, it's, it's a no. tricky situation. It just, it's not quite how the law works. Yeah. I just hope that it stays free and that no nobody comes in and tries to... The big question is, why did the student do this? 
because he believes that vaccines are a human right that everyone should have access to. And I don't think that I'm being controversial here when I say I agree with that viewpoint. Everyone should have access to good vaccine. I realize that the, probably the longer that I keep doing this, the, the title of the series will become uh, increasingly irrelevant. But regardless, since I've spent a good couple of minutes uh, preaching about how everything is terrible and how I'm the greatest thing ever, draw everything to a close here. I want to hear what you think. Um, do you agree with my opinions? Disagree? Do you have any other stories that kind of relate to all this? I, I really want to hear your feedback regarding the stories this week or the show in general and how I can you know, make this better. I really want this to be a conversation. I'm pretty sure I've said this before, but it's the truth. I pass the torch onto you.